Howdy folks, Dread Shells here, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And uh, today we're going to be looking at a game that I had in the ER90. This is year 9 of uh, French Wheelie Tank. You guys have seen me post a ton of content on the EBR 75FL10. Um, that is the, the Tier 8 Premium Wheelie, or the Pay to Win uh, Wheelie, as I like to call it. Because the tank is clearly not balanced well, and it's pretty overpowered. Um, and today we are going to be looking at a game that I had on Fisherman's Bay. And mainly the focus of this video is going to be talking about what to do um, when you get into a game when there's lots of scouts in the game, um, when the enemies are really aggressive and don't have as much um, freedom to have a vision role for your team, competition of the enemy scouts or meet fast tanks, uh, or your own scouts, you know, they're using the same positions or the same area of the map that you are, right? So, um, granted, it's a lot easier. Hello, replays doing something. Um, the it's much easier to do this in a in a wheelie tank just because it's fast. But the general principles apply uh, and concepts apply to uh, almost any scout that you play as long as the scout is quick enough. So um, I'm not going to ramble too much longer than, um, than that too much. Uh, I have been enjoying this tank uh, a lot um, and we're getting pretty close to three mark in it. So hopefully I can get a good game and post that for you guys. But uh, let's just start the battle here. So we're in a tier 9 game here on, on Fisherman's Bay, so it's nice that we are top tier, but uh, that's kind of where the matchmaking um, generosity ends. There's four scouts on each side, there's a lot of mobility, um, there's more mediums, um, there's a couple of their uh, arty on each side, so the matchmaking isn't, isn't great. So whenever you're positioning yourself in, in a scout, um, initially I was going for the passive spotting position there in, in oh, what is that, E2? But I was prepared to not, um, to not stop, right? When, it's always important, I'll just uh, pause the game here, it's always important uh, to, I'll just go cam here. Always important to remember when just when you're looking at the lineup of tanks. When you're thinking about going into a passive spotting position, remember that there's a really high chance that you will get spotted when there's this many scouts in a game, right? So so you need to have a backup plan. You're like, "Okay, what am I going to do if I get spotted?" Am I able to retreat? Um, how am I going to retreat? How am I going to keep myself getting shot by the enemy? Right? So when that EBR made that really aggressive roll scout here, I was already prepared mentally to react to that because I was anticip anticipating that, that there would be a high chance that a scout would be doing that. So instead of just continuing into this push and then slowing down, right? I just was ready to run away back down here into the draw over here, right? So, um, so yeah, that's that's an important thing. Um, keep going here. Hello, that was a weird audio bug. All right, so here's what the game focuses on. Um, go back into fix cam there. The enemy are going to be really super aggressive here on the one line. I'm going to stay here as long as I can. Uh, to give my snipers time to, um, to to get some shots of damage in, but then I have to leave, right? Because I cannot stay in that position because enemies where this this Fosh is right here, and all the enemies that are sitting up here where the Centurion was spotted and where the Fosh were spotted are going to have um, shots on me. It's going to be really difficult for me to hide behind this little... Um, rise here in, in the bridge because it's not that high and Artie can shoot me 
And so we're at a huge pickle right now because the enemy are being really aggressive. They pushed all the way up the one line, and so um, our snipers are don't have very good shots on them anymore unless they brown this rock over here. And then I'll go into free cam again just so you guys can see what I mean. So there's this rock right here. Once the enemies get kind of past this halfway point right here, the snipers back here don't have very good shots on them unless they peek eye up on the ridge, like if they climb up, or if they come around this rock. So um, if the enemies get this close, it, it puts your team in a really, really tough pickle. Um, the other problem that we're having is that this R90 over here is being, continuing to be really aggressive. So I can't really stay in this position um, like I was before, definitely not passively. So um, you always need to be ready to be flexible in a scout. When you're playing a scout, obviously in an EBR, it's because it's really fast, but in any scout, be willing to change your mind on what how you're positioning yourself, what you're supposed to be doing in a battle. Um, a lot of the times, uh, the reason that people aren't getting good results is because you you stick yourself to one plan, right? And then you you're not willing to uh, you're not willing to change your mind about where you should go. And what you... So right now, I'm just going to kind of shift my my role scouting, my driving to more towards the center of the map here. I'm going to do something really aggressive here, and it's kind of dumb, but not too risky. Um, I get shot at a few times there by tanks back there in the city where that Weezy 120 is. There, I'll blow up the minimap so you guys get better. Um, this That move is something that only a wheelie can get away with, so don't try that <laughs> in any other kind of a tank. Because <laughs> you're just not fast enough. Dodge. So right now, I'm trying to figure out how to help my team, right? How can I how can I get rid of those mediums or, or help put pressure on them so they're not they're not pressuring my snipers? So right now, I do something really high risk here. Um, not the best angle of roll scouting here, but my thinking here was in that roll scout. So the enemy is really close. Obviously, they're proximity protecting our T four teammate. They're also spotting our snipers back, right? So they have a double lane of fire, right? So they have, um, we're going into free cam a lot in this battle, FYI. All right, so they are able to shoot directly here, and they also have people that can shoot behind them as well. So that's two angles of fire. Um, vertically, that is, not, not horizontally. So I want to try and take away um, the, you know, something I can't dig these mediums and light out here just because if I go in, um, their snipers behind me are going to wreck me. So what can I do? I can do to their snipers what these guys are doing to our snipers. At least I can try to help even the odds and suppress the fire a little bit behind them by trying to keep these guys spotted. That way, these guys don't have free reign to shoot at, uh, with impunity on our guys back here if and when they get spotted by the enemy um the 1390 and uh, mediums that, that that was my my thinking process by by being really aggressive right here i'll try not to pause the replay as much guys sorry it's just my really bad habit it's not i just it's hard to fit in all the, the commentary in the short amount of time that something happens in. So right now, I'm trying to figure out, ooh, the enemy EBR did something a little way too aggressive, no? And now, now I have opportunity, right? Now I'm flexing over. The 1390 is a one-shot, and I want to see if I can get rid of him, right? Hesitate here a little bit just to wait and see if the snipers behind me get spotted. There is actually a way to do this without actually pivoting down into the bowl. Get really unlucky there that the shot didn't connect with the 1390. Fortunately, so we're gonna have to try again here, and that's what we do. So we're able to do that with 
relatively much more safety than the my teammates can driving around the rock because they just get from the snipers. I can obviously get shot by the snipers as well, but I am a lot faster. It's a lot harder of a shot for them to hit me. So the enemy did a kind of a misplay there. They overpeaked that and they lost a lot of their HP. So our team did a good job of, of not over themselves and just letting the enemy make mistakes on that line. So I was a really, really uh, Carry situation there where the enemy team had a lot of scouts they were being really aggressive on the one line and I get respotted here this is where map knowledge comes in and being aware of where enemies were last spotted I know that the T-34-2 um, could not have spotted me because how I exited the bush Right? How I exited the bush was directly away from where he was. Okay? My camel rating, I know, is good enough to where these guys back here will not be able to spot me. Unless, you know, someone is sitting here, right, in one of these bushes. So, I know with really high certainty that it was the 1390 that spotted me for map knowledge. I know that the only bush on the angle of the slope that he could have spotted me from was right here. Now, not rocket science. See that on the mini map right here in F4. That was where he was last spotted. The location was. But now we know that he's still there, right? So what we can do is use that information in our next engagements. So knowing where the enemy is even if they're not spotted, is really important when you're playing a scout because, um, and this is generally down to six cents. So I'm gonna do something that only a wheelie could do here. I'm gonna harass this 1390 and not let him sit there for free. Once again, really stupid to do this in any other tank, any other scout, so don't do it. Um, it might even be considered stupid to do it in the wheelie. But I don't want the wheelie, or excuse me, <laughs> I don't want the 1390 to sit there for free, right? I want to put some kind of pressure on him, make him feel uncomfortable, right? But I don't want to kill myself in the process, so um, I want to do it with some some sort of sense. So right now I'm waiting to see if I get any shots of opportunity here. Enemy Borsig gets really aggressive here in the middle here, and I'm going to make him pay for it here. Got the HE loaded. EBR-90 has awesome HE shells. I, I carry a lot of HE in this tank. I have 10 rounds of ammunition, I think, for nice soft targets like the Borsig. Uh, staying slippery here just to avoid return fire, mainly from the 1390. Um, luckily, none of neither of his shots uh, connected. Um, my main worry was not letting the Borsig be able to wrap his, turn his gun around because he was using the big gun and he can actually... Uh, maybe even one shot me with that big gun, depending on if he has HD loaded or whatever. So now the T-34-2 is a one shot here, and I'm just going to help clean clean him up here. Really worried about taking a lot of fire from the Fosh here, so I immediately wrap in on the inside of the slope here, to, so he doesn't have e easy shots on me. Big and zag here to make it harder for Artie to hit me. And there we go. We're starting to to get better positioning on the enemy, right? So, why are we are where we were in, uh, in in this battle? Part of it is down to poor decisions by the enemy, but a lot of it is because um, we were willing to relocate. Really lucky shot there on the move. Uh, we tracked him and uh, uh, we got some assistance damage there. And that made him into a one shot. All right, so um, how I'm engaging this Fosh here is really important. I look in third person to see where he's looking. Always really good to use third person before you decide how you're going to engage a target. We see that he's turned and he's tracked. We retrack him. And we, uh, we want to keep moving, right? Because we're the forward most tank on our team. Uh, try to go for an HE side pen there because the Foshes have really weak side armor and rear armor, but we didn't get it unfortunately. But we always want to stay moving 
because there's two Artie still alive in the game. There's one of them. And Artie has a certain tendency to tanks that they think are the highest threat to them, regardless of what's happening in the battle. Since I'm the forwardmost tank on my team, I'm probably going to take all the Artie fire. Oh, that Artie dodge. Oh, that was so sexy. Can, can, can we look at that again? Oh. Oh, that, that was so sexy. Okay. So we kill the... I'm sorry, it's just so much fun to, to dodge, dodge Artie shells. Oh. oh, that's sexy. You can't do that in every tank, and, def and not even in every scout. Um, Artie is so much more accurate these days, so... Um, it's a lot harder to dodge their shells, and it's really nice when you're able to do it. Anyway, so, um, back to my commentary about just the tactical situation of the battle. Be willing to relocate, be flexible, don't, you're not a brunt instrument in a scout, and certainly not in a wheelie. Um, this is, I think, one of my, um misplays in the battle here, how I engage this IS-3. The first shot is fine, second shot is fine, get really lucky that he did not pen me, and the shot goes in my wheels, and now that was a really bad shot there on the on the front here, auto-aiming at the front, uh, and auto-aiming at the side. Um, I'll let the replay continue, you guys can see. So, auto-aiming at a tank with armor like this, even when he has his side to you, is really bad. Because what auto aiming does is it centers your reticle to the center of the tank, more or less. Um, so what might happen is the shot is is not being aimed low enough to avoid the spaced armor of 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 the hull here, and potentially can even hit the turret. So me auto aiming here was really bad. I was just being lazy. I should have just aimed slightly above the tracks and below the spaced armor strip here, and I would have killed them a long time ago. So, um, some really bad shots there at the end here. That was a weird bug. Finally, take the auto-aim off and aim like I should. But yeah, um, so that is the game that uh, I had here on Fisherman's Bay in the EBR-90. Um, a really tricky battle to fight in. Um, you and some of the things that I did in this battle, you honestly can't do in other scouts, but the general principles apply. Um, don't be really conservative when there's this that many scouts in in a battle. Um, and that much mobility on the teams in a battle in general. There's fast mediums, fast heavies, fast tank destroyers. Um, you need to be careful about how you're locating. Be willing to be flexible, rotate around an, an enemy thrust um, if they're being really aggressive in a certain area in the map. Um, be willing to relocate to support your teammates if uh, vision doesn't really matter at that moment and your direct fire support is more important. Um, just little things like that are really important and will help you get, have more success in today's matchmaking where you tend to get a lot of scouts in games. Um, I've been reading up, currently Wargaming have plans in the works of trying to fix, um, the huge light tank saturation and matchmaking at the moment, which, who knows when that'll actually be implemented, because sometimes Wargaming says they'll do something, and it doesn't happen until a year later, so we'll see what happens with that, but I hope they fix it, because... Personally, I think there shouldn't be more than two scouts on a team per battle, so there shouldn't be more than four scouts in a game. Um, and I'm a scout player, so um, I just think it makes the battle too unpredictable, too um, reflex-oriented, reaction-oriented, and not tactical. Just you know, swarm, the general swarm herding mentality, right? And it doesn't feel very tactical. And it's not the world of tanks that I started playing. So I really hope that they uh, fix it.
fix that matchmaking. Ugh. Cold is making it hard for me to talk. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this battle and got some ideas on, on how to deal with problems like that. I wish you guys the best of luck out there. Um, happy hunting and take care.